Happy Monday, everyone. It's great to be back for now. <laughs> so I had an anniversary this weekend. Yes, it was the seventh anniversary of the first time I saw Kim Kardashian's butt in person. <laughs> See, that is me uh, right there. <laughs> I'm behind her and to the right, and you can clearly see my eyes were laser focused <laughs> on that thing. And that thing was so big, it kind of felt like it was staring back. <laughs> now, this happened in 2016 at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. I haven't gone since because how could I top that? But this weekend's version of the event also reminded me why I haven't been back either. Mainstream media sucks and it's worse than a tux, because the coverage <laughs> reminds us of exactly what it really is about, something I call ego-affirming care. It's where members of the so-called free press can inflate their self-esteem like Chinese spy balloons. <laughs> and like every award show, it's artificially created as a reminder that they matter. It's where they can savor a shrimp cocktail along with the smell of Joe Biden's lingering farts. <laughs> They smell like butterscotch. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what happens when you mainline Werther's. <laughs> now, to say DC is Hollywood for ugly people is unfair to ugly people. At least ugly folks hide their faces when they're not on CNN. So as usual, the media puts a staggering amount of energy to invite people that make themselves look cool. As the Washington Post points out, a good guest can help validate the importance of a news organization, and the jockeying for dinner guests starts as early as January. So Brittany Griner was a guest of CBS. You know, it's a good thing we got that trade done for the Russian arms dealer in time, right? Because she brought the weed. <laughs> <laughs> and guests needed to be really high to laugh at most of those jokes. She sat with Gail King, who was relieved to not be the tallest lesbian in the room. <laughs> She's straight. But as always, it was surreal to watch some of the worst people in Washington rub shoulders with some of the worst people in Hollywood. That Adams Family reboot looks pretty good, right, huh? <laughs> They've already cast Lurch. <laughs> <laughs> John Legend and Chrissy Teigen were also there. And like any good royal, Chrissy had some helpful servants to carry the train of her dress. They should just be thankful they'll never have to do that for Eric Swalwell. You know, because he farts. Oh. You know, maybe we should just kill that joke after a while. Nobody remembers it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why were those two there? Well, they were guests of NBC News. But better question, why are they there? NBC must really hate the press to inflict that kind of torture on this group. It's a cute prank, of course. Invite the most insufferable, insufferable cretins and let them flaunt their superiority all over you. Plus, they smell. <laughs> I don't know that, but I thought I'd add that. Now, the night was also a chance for reporters to get chummy with the world's biggest dummy. <laughs> It had to be stressful for Joe's handlers. Whenever he's under the bright lights, they're afraid he'll walk toward them. <laughs> Although I wonder, in a lot of ways, does this dinner sum up his first two years in office, where he talks for 10 minutes, takes zero questions, and then cheerfully walks away? In a lot of ways, this dinner sums up my first two years in office. I'll talk for 10 minutes, take zero questions, and cheerfully walk away. The difference here being he didn't fall off the stage trying to fist bump Castor, Casper the friendly ghost. <laughs> the most powerful man in the free world just bragged about his contempt for the press, and they all just sat there and chuckled. Ha ha, good one, boss. You keep tossing us the rotting fish, and we'll keep clapping like trained seals. Or how about this wise crack? I had a lot of Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis jokes ready. But Mickey, but Mickey Mouse beat the hell out of me and got there first. Mickey Mouse beat the hell out of him. For what, trying to sniff his ears? <laughs> no doubt a mouse could kick Biden's ass. At this point, I wouldn't take Joe over Tinkerbell. But that line made zero sense, so maybe it does sum up his time as president. I think maybe the teleprompter said Mickey Mouse beat him to it, and Joe screwed up the punchline. You know, he's the first president to read at a third grade level. 
It's too bad that people have to pretend the president's jokes were funny, which you wouldn't have to do if Trump was there. You'd think at least one time he'd get up and say, I'm running for president. Uh, where, where am I going? Where the hell am I going? I want to get out. Oh, no, over there, over there. <laughs> Yeah, fine. And you, and you know Joe's decrepit when you're getting mocked by a 76-year-old. <laughs> but it's too bad Trump never went, because he would have killed. And not in the Hillary Clinton way. <laughs> Washington Post reporter Matt Viser won the Aldo Beckman Award for capturing the spirit of Joe, of Joe Biden. And that's a tough spirit to capture, since it flees Joe's body when he flatlines five times a week. <laughs> the judges that said Matt Viser stood out among his competitors for work that went beyond the humdrum of covering the managed events of the presidency and the White House. Viser captured the spirit of Joe Biden, particularly with stories about the president's brother and how his Catholic faith influenced his strategic vision of the office. The WHCA is pleased to give the Aldo Beckman Award to Matt Viser. So his Catholic faith influenced his vision for the office? How exactly? You know, defending abortion up until the kid can do his timetables? Oh, God. So a reporter gets an award for kissing the president's ass. How's that for speaking truth to power? But there were a few good reporters there, right? They were easy to spot because they were all from the same place. And unlike the crowd, they weren't ugly. Look at these four hotties propping. Yeah. Yeah. These, these four striking ladies propping up a billboard for Gamblers Anonymous. <laughs> now, you might be saying, Greg, you're better looking than all of them. Why didn't you go? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're right. But I couldn't because Saturday night is Twister Night at the Orphanage. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guest. She recently had speed bumps installed in her larynx. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Host of the True Crime, run Fox True Crime podcast, Emily Campagno. <laughs> He's the best thing to happen to education since books. Professor and author of the new book, The Sad Truth About Happiness, Gad Sad. <laughs> Born in Philly, he actually comes to New York to feel safe. CEO of Electric Bike Technologies, Jason Crowe. And finally, she just flew back from Chicago, and boy, are her arms skinny. <laughs> Fox News contributor, Ketchup. So, Emily, I, you know, when you look at the news side of Fox, there are some people, they have to go to these things, right? They don't have, they have to go because it's about the news. But there are some people who don't have to go, like you, and still you went. Why did you go? What's your problem? Because I was invited. <laughs> I oh, was you were? Invited. Yeah. yeah. So, you, so that means you'll go to anything that you're invited to? <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I didn't. Um, Tell me about it. What was it like for you? Well, unlike Chrissy Teigen, I brought my own dress on the train. Mm -hmm. I did my own hair and makeup. You know, I'm, I'm a normal human. I, I carried it myself. My boyfriend zipped me up in the back, and then I, I went to the dinner. I hate I, the part about the boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that, um, you know, hearing, for example, like President Biden's quote, like he said, this sums it up. I agree, as Scott Jennings from CNN said, you know, he's, he's not laughing with you, press corps, he's laughing at you. Mm -hmm. And the only difference between that quote um, and the, the truth, like the, the full truth, would be summing up his two years of presidency by lighting a match, dropping it, and walking away. Because absolutely, there's been zero transparency and zero engagement on a fundamental and real level with a press corps, in addition to figuratively burning this country to the ground. Mm -hmm. And for that guy to win an award, about his Catholic faith, to your point about the abortion, and this is someone who, again, a, a self-professed Catholic who denies his grandchild. Yeah. Who has put 
avenues for tripwires in Catholic churches around the country under his watch. We know the FBI director says, oh, I'm aghast, quote, at it. I'm appalled. I didn't know it was happening. But that's Biden's America. So this presidency is a dumpster fire, as was, I guess, his speech, because it lacked the real truth, which is that he only holds disdain for everyone in that room, myself included. But yeah. I had a good time, Greg. Yes. <laughs> I wonder right now the Secret Service is wondering, how did she get that close to Biden? <laughs> Professor, congratulates on the new book. What is the secret to happiness? Before I ask you about this thing, do you have a... Uh, can you well, I mean, there's many, but one, find the right spouse, find the right job. That, uh, I'm over 2. No, I'm kidding. I'm over 2. <laughs> uh, so I'm joking. She doesn't watch. Everything in moderation. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, live life as though it's a playground. Always be smiling. Don't take yourself seriously. Live without regret. There's a whole bunch of good stuff in there. By the way, I have a bone to pick with you. What? Your book is being released on the same day as mine. Mm. I consider that a form of anti-Semitism. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's right. <laughs> Do you have the equivalent of this kind of self-congratulation in academic circles? The, I, you do, yeah. and I try to avoid it like the plague. Mm -hmm. Groucho Marx famously said, right, I don't want to belong to a club that would have me as a member. Yeah. And these guys are doing the exact opposite. Please choose me. Please have me. I despise that kind of attitude. I mean, to a fault, I usually reject invitations to go to these self-congratulatory mm -hmm. things in academia. So mm -hmm. That was a slam at you. Emma. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> But, <laughs> can I briefly mention a thing about uh, the train? I think yeah. it's called the of, of uh, Chrissy. Mm -hmm. So, and you, I know that you love evolutionary psychology. The peacock has a big tail because it serves as an honest signal, mm -hmm. a costly signal. It has to be wasteful in order for it to be right discriminating, right? Discriminatory. Well, she's doing exactly that. I mean, literally, there's a tail behind her that shows, look how wealthy I must be to be able to engage in this kind of wasteful consumption. Mm. You know, and she could save a lot. She could just leave any bathroom stall and do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I leave a, tra a train. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. Sorry, Jason. Did yeah. you learn? Do you? Uh, what, uh, what's your overall take from something like this? In your, because you're outside the media. I think out of all of us here, you're probably the furthest from it. I would. Yeah, say. I am the least famous person. Nobody knows who I am. Yeah, <laughs> we like to keep it that way. Yeah, this, yeah. and this show will help that. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I, you know, I love it. Um, this is like the Hunger Games for the corrupt. Mm. I mean, talk about cronyism. Yeah. Like, if they're, you know, like we need any more evidence mm -hmm. that that these people are making backroom deals and everybody's, you know, so familiar. Yeah. Well, they cut the, they, it's that thing where like, hey, it's all, you realize it's all in so-called part of a game because everybody's chummy yeah. after they try to destroy each other. Yeah. It's like some weird, like, family reunion where they pretend they're not related, but they're all like distant cousins. Yeah, exactly. And they're, and they're you know, getting drunk, smoking weed in the shed and then plotting to steal granny's jewelry. Yes. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what <laughs> that I That went mean. all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. There you go. But no, it's, listen, this whole event is like, the American people are tired and it's like, they're all so full of <laughs> can't yeah. take it anymore. Yeah, they are. Am I, famous? Am I famous now? Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you destroyed yourself. Kat, yeah. how, was your, how was your Chicago live show? It was so much fun. Was it? What Yay. happened? So many fun you things. You didn't get mugged or murdered. No, I didn't. I was hoping for the latter. <laughs> yeah. I thought that we would have such a huge show. We really need the ratings. Yeah. If you were murdered, yeah. because it's been kind of a rough week. If I was murdered, would you just do one segment on it? Or that would I get, like... So we talked about this. We talked would about this. Would it be like this. the E-Block or the Final Thoughts? Cat's dead, so, RIP. No, but you know what? I, the Five said they would let me do a one more thing. Okay. But it, it would be towards the end when we do the toss to Brett. So you might get 15 seconds. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I had a great time. It was awesome. I'm in D.C. on Saturday. If everybody wants to get tickets at therealcattiff.com. Mm -hmm. See, I throw my own events. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you went to this last year, didn't you? Yeah, and I'm glad I did. Uh, it was a good experience to have. It was a lot of work mm -hmm. to, like, get ready and all that. And, you know, Chrissy Teigen, I don't, I think it's fine to be super rich. Mm -hmm. What bothers me about her is she also wants so desperately to be relatable. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember a few, I think it was a few years ago, she tweeted, what's the most expensive thing that you ate that you didn't like? She's like, one time I accidentally ordered a 13,000 bottle of wine. <laughs> yeah. And people were not finding that as relatable as she thought that yes. it was. They'd yeah. be like, oh, I'd be in financial ruin if I did that. Yeah. Um, and if it's she, a good you know, question, though. If I, if I had... 
that kind of money for people to like hold my dress, I'd be like, I'm rich, bitch, you just own it, you know? Yeah. And I, but I don't, right? I bet I could get some old men to do it for free. I bet you but... could. <laughs> There's a few. They, just... I could actually probably sell tickets to it. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I, I, that's the thing, pretending they're just like us, they're not just like us, and that's fine. Just kind of own it, and it wouldn't be so weird. I accidentally ate a panda. Oh. What? Yes, no. an endangered panda. I was at a zoo in China, and I had no, I thought you go in, you just kill it, you eat it. Like it was one of those hunt, hunting restaurants, and you just grill it. I had no idea. Uh, <laughs> no way. Yeah, anyway, Gad's like, why are you listening to him? He's a liar. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.